What's going on there folks? Good morning, the Earthmaster here on the live stream with an update video on this Wednesday morning, March 16th, 2022, uh, about 11.10 a.m. California time. Latest quake shows a 2.5 earthquake out there on the Earthquake 3D globe in the Hawaii area. Uh, seen quite a bit of movement take place this morning, about four hours ago, had a pretty large earthquake strike uh, off the coast of Japan. Let's go ahead and check out the latest movement here on the USGS map showing that activity right there in the watch area, the Japan Trench. We've been watching this area pretty closely over the past uh, few months or so. We haven't really seen a whole lot of release of movement and we were looking for something at least a 7.0. Uh, this earthquake that came in this morning was originally a 7.6. Uh, it has been downgraded to a 7.3 and it looks like there was uh, a pretty good foreshock prior to the uh, main quake. Hopefully this is the main quake now. Sometimes we get these series of uh, uh, earthquakes like this and we get a, a much larger one kick up. So got to watch that today as well. Um, there's always that potential and possibility that uh, these could be four quakes uh, in general. There's something much bigger. This area does see some mega quakes and uh, uh, slip rate is super duper high in this region. Anyway, 6.4 struck uh, and then about... Um, two minutes later we had the 7.3 kick up here now it is somewhat deep into the japan trench at uh, 50 to 60 kilometers down in there it looks like there was a 4.1 last night within that same area but a little bit more upstream towards the uh, uh the surface area at 28 kilometers but uh, man that's a pretty pretty powerful earthquake there 7.3 shaking things up there in the japan region there was no tsunami uh, from this earthquake, uh, fortunately, but uh, definitely a pretty powerful earthquake. Uh, as you can see there on the regional view, they, they, this place gets a lot of earthquakes. Here's a little info from the USGS uh, page. The March 16, 2022, 7.3 earthquake near the coast of Japan occurred as a result of thrust faulting at or near the subduction zone plate boundary, right? The Pacific and the North American plates. Um, Solutions indicate that the slip occurred either or on a moderately dipping fault striking to the south or a moderately dipping fault striking to the north. Uh, consistent with the east-west uh, east oriented compression expected in this region. Uh, see here's the accumulated uh, slip rate here. 70 mm a year, so it's pretty, uh, uh, it's pretty high. Uh, let's see here. Here's the uh, foreshock. The March 16th earthquake was preceded by a 6.4 foreshock approximately two minutes earlier. Pretty crazy, right? A lot of uh, activity. Uh, let's see, approximately six. Oh, wow. That's, that's talking about the uh, goodness, everything going off this morning. Uh, the March 2011 M9.1 earthquake was widely felt on this around this region. Um, I, I don't think this is aftershock activity from that, but uh, just due to the uh, high slip rate in this region. But this is kind of where the uh, 9.1 uh, occurred back in 2000, 2011, roughly within this area. But uh, man, let me tell you, it's, uh, it's, uh, it took a little while for this earthquake to happen. We've been talking about it here for the past couple months. We've seen all sorts of activity here to the south. Uh, all the subsequent deep movement throughout the region and with no major adjustment up here. So it's just a matter of time before we've seen something significant come in. Uh, but still got to watch for potentially possibly something larger there. Uh, just um, just a, uh, a little percentage to maybe keep into mind there the uh, possibility of something larger kicking up. So, so far aftershock activity following the 7.3, I'm getting my earthquake app overload on my phone right now uh, they're seeing quite the uptick in aftershock sequences here of course usgs only showing 4.0 and above uh, they got 5.5 uh, as the largest aftershock so far uh, within this region and uh, i was no doubt definitely felt over a pretty pretty broad area looking at the did you fill it reports out here uh, definitely felt down there in tokyo and all up and down the east coast here of Japan. Uh, some pretty strong shaking. Looks like some folks reported feeling uh, some 
severe shaking in the region. And uh, while it's definitely not a deep earthquake, but uh, not not super shallow either. So uh, yeah, we'll just we're gonna watch this pretty closely, folks. Remember we had those 6.3. 6.4 actually in Philippines and the 6.7 here in the Java Trench a couple days ago and uh, Man, it's just At least at least for now. Hopefully that will hold things off uh, Because the longer the longer this area went without any subsequent larger earthquake activity I think the bigger it would have been So hopefully that 7.3 will keep it that area safe for a little bit at least as far as release of energy uh, Let's go ahead and check out the let me show you what it did here to the Yellowstone graph. This here is the overview in Yellowstone National Park. Of course, these large earthquakes can show up uh, thousands of miles away, and yes, this one did too. And then again, look at these maps here. I keep kind of pointing out the uh, Joseph's Coat and the, uh, it looks like the Upper Falls area, not reporting it at, at all, none. It didn't even pick up the seismograph wave whatsoever, while the rest of the stations around the park picked it up pretty nicely. Um, Flag Ranch, for example, there's, there's the uh, 7.3 uh, and then followed up by some uh, S waves. Let's see, super duper wavy lines. Kind of looks a little bit bigger though than a 7.3. Uh, EMSC, like I mentioned, originally brought it in as a 7.6. Uh, we'll see if these guys do any adjustments or not. Uh, I want to check out the EMSC model and see what these guys still have. Uh, still have it on. Look at this. Look at all this aftershock sequences here following that uh, earthquake. I see a lot of threes, a lot of fours kicking up there. 5.6. These guys still have it as 7.3. Uh, but there's quite a bit of earthquake activity happening following that. And uh, of course that's expected from a major quake. Uh, looking at the rest of the globe, what do we got going on here? Normally when we see this activity here along the western part, of the Pacific Ring of Fire that uh, allows for a little bit of relief out here in, in the North American continent here for the West Coast and at least looking at this map <clears throat> excuse me things are kind of uh, a little on the calm side there is some activity stand by for a minute <clears throat> uh, little, little activity into the Intermountain West region and also California but uh, a lot of the swarming and a lot of the widespread activity looks as though it's dying down. Um, I do want to bring up one article before we get into this activity. Uh, I'm sure if you're notified uh, on news events from the USGS, there was an article put out uh, this morning. And this here was uh, at 1750 UTC time from the USGS that... Uh, Let's check the time that earthquake came into the uh, uh, Japan region. That was at about 1436 UTC time for that uh, 7.3. But a couple hours later, the uh, USGS here put out a news article about a severe interruption to a regional telecommunication link in the King Salmon area that has resulted in the loss of data flow from seismic stations at nine volcanoes. Uh, in the region and the northern Alaska Peninsula over the last says the last couple weeks or past weeks uh, as a result the Alaskan Observatory or Volcano Observatory can no longer seismically monitor the volcanoes listed below uh, thus we are unable to access whether these volcanoes are at their normal background state or to quickly confirm or dismiss reports of activity at these volcanoes so I find that a little odd um, <clears throat> with this timing uh, and the uh, earthquake activity and whatnot. Not for sure what's going on specifically, but here are the volcanoes. It doesn't say what caused the interruption. It just says a severe interruption to a regional te telecommunication link. So we got uh, all these volcanoes here that uh, are not going to be uh, monitored, uh, even if they're having activity, due to the lack of uh, uh, the network now. Pretty crazy, huh? This is the uh, a little hazard notification system uh, for the volcanoes there in the Alaskan volcano region. Here's a link from the USGS. Pretty uh, interesting. I thought I'd share that this morning. 
uh, getting back over here to the West Coast. Uh, like I said, as we mentioned here, not a whole lot going on within the last hour. A lot of this activity here is from yesterday. We'll see later this evening in the update, see how, uh, see if this continues to die down. Like I mentioned, this we do see that bounce back and forth here, that little teeter-totter effect. And with this activity here around Japan, things should quiet down here along the West Coast. We were starting to see swarms and um, all sorts of activity around the San Andreas Fault, up and down the Sierra Nevada, uh, the Bay Area. Yellowstone was starting to swarm yesterday and uh, all that activity leading up to uh, the 7.3 over here on the western side of the Pacific Plate. And now we've seen uh, pretty much a complete halt uh, to the activity. Yellowstone swarming up here, a little bit of activity kicking up last night, a couple more spikes. And then uh, we got this uh, got this 7.3 reading. I'm not for sure what this is down here, though. Let's see. Is that showing up on any other stations? Uh, which it is. I think that's still just the, uh, the ringing of the globe, so to speak. Because the uh, S waves travel through the Earth and around the Earth. Uh, not only once, but it could be a couple times. So that's kind of what we're seeing there. And this subsequent uh, blue line and the squiggly lines there. So I uh, will definitely watch it. Pretty powerful earthquake for sure. Uh, let's get back over here and look at uh, some of the activity here in Hawaii. So what, what do we got going on in Hawaii? Whenever we see a major plate adjustment on either side of the Pacific plate, it tends to uh, affect Hawaii a little bit. And looking at the latest map here shows uh, nothing strange, nothing out of the ordinary just a uh, typical earthquake activity here in the southeast region with a couple within the last hour um, volcanoes remain uh, stable let's go ahead and check out the or at least not stable but nothing uh, major uh, no major changes so to speak Hawaiian volcano observatory site showing uh, the statuses there of Kilauea and Mauna Loa I believe this update, uh, actually they updated it, uh, yeah, from yesterday. This is still Tuesday. No major changes going on. Um, just a, uh, the uh, continued flow at the lava lake. Actually, it looks like uh, the level of the lake remained low after yesterday's drop. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? Yeah, there's a little bit of uh, inflationary tilt at the summit of Kilauea Volcano uh, yesterday. It looks like it has leveled off and remains flat and stable. The level of the lake, Lava Lake, remained low after yesterday's drop and it was measured at 26 feet below the rim. So it just kind of comes and goes there at the uh, Kilauea Volcano. We'll watch that though pretty closely, see if we get any uh, type of unusual activity there in the uh, volcano region other areas around the philippines the mariana trench uh some movement from yesterday we haven't seen any renewed uptick and this activity around the tonga region uh, a little bit of it uh from this morning but uh, most of this activity from last late last night in the area of the tonga and the samoa region <clears throat> uh, what else we got here for the uh, world a little bit of activity around the Himalayas, it looks like, and 5.1 in the uh, Pakistan area. Some movement up and down the Atlantic, it looks like, as well. This is pretty quiet last night. Seen some movement kick up here, uh, looks like overnight, though, in the region of the uh, northern and the mid-Atlantic area. Uh, trimmer activity from last night uh, remained absolute zero. Kind of odd, right? So we've seen about nine days of trimmer kick up and then a complete halt and then a 7.3 on the western side of the plate. Coincident? Nah, I think it's all got a rhyme and reason to it. Uh, I'm going to jump off here, folks, and uh, continue to monitor the activity out there on the western part of the Pacific plate. Uh, for some reason, I, I'm not able to pull up a Japan seismograph station uh, to monitor the ongoing activity, but uh, I'll see what I can see what I can do. I'll keep digging around here, uh, but uh, we do have the EMSC model <clears throat> on the uh, globe. Goodness, 
I was out in the rain enjoying the weather yesterday. And uh, I'll pull up an article. Uh, let me see if I can pull that up here real quick. Stand by for a real quick second. Okay, here's a little article I'm going to read here uh, real quick on the live stream. Uh, it's an article put out from uh, KCRA. It's a TV station in Sacramento. Uh, talking about the cloud seeding. Uh, the article reads, For the first time in over two months, measurable rainfall fell Tuesday morning in California's Central Valley. At the same time, a special aircraft was navigating the gray skies, releasing flares into the clouds below. Those flares contain a chemical solution that acts as cloud seeds. Uh, the concept of cloud seeding has been used off and on mainly by militaries since the 1940s. Uh, it's a type of weather modification that can boost the productivity of rain or snow producing clouds. So they were doing it yesterday. We noticed here uh, just outside of the Chico area um, the night before some very low flying aircraft that sound like a jetliner. <clears throat> and uh, we didn't we looked on the flight map seeing if there was any aircraft in the area and sure enough there wasn't any being listed so uh just found it kind of odd well anyway yesterday we had thunderstorms just blow up out of the blue and dump a massive amount of rain in a short amount of time over portions of uh the sacramento valley here just basically within one spot about uh, 75 miles north of sacramento around willows they just seen a big, massive amount of uh, rainfall, and then it just quickly vanished. I just, I've never seen nothing like that, and I don't think conditions were prime for thunderstorm development yesterday. The Cape values were not all that high. The, um, I don't know, it just didn't seem like we had the right conditions to produce these thunderstorms. But I'm starting to wonder if some of that cloud seeding uh, definitely had something to do with the, uh, with how these storms. Uh, acted yesterday. It was pretty crazy. Um, I'm definitely a big fan of thunderstorms, but uh, I just find it really strange how powerful they were and then um, how quickly they vanished just like that. I mean, it's just a little odd. Anyway, I thought I'd share that uh, cloud seeding article with you. It's uh, it's uh, it's on the kcra.com website and uh, it's the first time I've heard of, about it here in California in quite a few years. So... All right, folks, we're going to jump off here. Stay alert and uh, be prepared. We will talk, we'll chat you guys a little bit later tonight unless something major happens. Peace out, everyone.